Wait, so you want, so you want it something like using vert snapping to get it into place? Or was, was there something in particular you were trying to do with the pivots that you were having issues with? Okay. And I wasn't sure if there's a way to fix that. Gotcha. So the so the former changed like where the geometry was, but the pivot stayed the same? Uh-huh. Okay. Um honestly I'm not entirely sure off the top of my head. I've never had that be an issue. Um the, I mean I was gonna suggest so let me just like throw some kind of really what kind of deformer were you using? Uh, Sweet. Um so we're actually going over deformers today. Um, wah -ha -ha. And so you're saying like maybe your, your pivot was sort of like over here or something like that and you wanted it in the center? No, it was more like the pivot had, like it was rotated to fit the origin. Oh, okay, yeah. So um, you can actually manually change the orientation of your pivot. No, it's not. Um, so you can also go in to your tool settings. And this is not helpful like all of the time, um, especially when you're using deformers, because that doesn't register a change in like the orientation of the object. Um, but you could try setting it to like component or uh, object, and that possibly would help, depending on what you've done with the deformer. Yeah, I tried that. It didn't work. Okay. Um, interesting. If it's Yeah, I think, I don't know off the top of my head, it's probably gonna bother me and I'm gonna keep thinking about it now. If I find anything out, I'll post some kind of notification on on Learn, but, okay. cause now I'm intrigued. I just sort of assume that like, deformers are one of those things where it's like it usually will mess up the sort of pivot and orientation of your object. The same way as doing something like combining two meshes is gonna get rid of any orientation information will, but interesting. Say again? <laughs> of course. Anybody else? All right. Um, cool. So I think I downloaded these at like 9.15 or something like that. So I'm just going to run through what I have. And then if we miss any, we can go back and look at those. Uh, so when we're watching these, what is this? Yeah, I'm sure. Um, keep a lookout for stuff like how is the camera movement feeling? Um, are there any camera moves that feel a little bit like weird or kind of awkward? Is there anything that you know makes you feel sick because of the because of the camera motion? Mm -hmm. um, and then, is there a large logical sort of start and end to the ride? And where were you able to tell where you were in space? So I feel like the uh, projector is like really <laughs> It is. I don't remember. I don't remember being that overexposed. It does look significantly better on my computer. <laughs> just, just to put that out there. Yeah. No, that's fair. <laughs> I also really want to read the note. That I, that I know jerks and it's like, it's not that good, that could be better. I'll say when it is, when it happens. Uh, sharp turn? When? Mm, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Um, cool. Yeah, so does anybody have any thoughts and comments on the animation, ideas, maybe how to make um, any of the camera movements, particularly that one that was just noted, uh, a little bit like smoother and less jarring? Anybody? All right. So I was thinking, like, for that one, so you do. The, wait, which one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was all that was pointed out. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think I think the first, like, when the first time it turns to the right coming up in, like, ten or, like, two seconds is pretty good because the camera, it's, 
the camera sort of stays where it is and you can see clearly that the, the paper airplane is turning in space. I think maybe for the second one, you could sort of do something similar where either you move it out of this turn sort of faster or you actually just let the, let the, it's not a flag, let the paper airplane get really <laughs> close to it. Um, and just like get really, really close to the camera, almost as if it's you know turning away so it doesn't hit the camera. Um, but I think there's a few different ways that you could probably handle that where it would be a little bit less choppy. It's just sort of like, I guess, playing with it a little bit to figure out what you want. I actually personally think that it would kind of be cool to get this close to the camera because it would be like an interesting sort of change in, in scale. And you had it a little bit at the end, but yeah. Also, I'm really curious, what it, does this note say anything in particular, or is it just like random text? Oh, wait, so I have another question. <laughs> I was just curious. I always, because that's like one of those things where like, if it were me, I would totally sneak some kind of like weird message in and just be like, oh, yeah. haha. <laughs> nah, it's all good. <laughs> um, and what's, what's the little grasses? Are they? So I, I was shown this amazing thing by uh, Christina, if you know her. Um, oh. Uh, it's a, like paint. And, like, oh, the, the like, paint effects? Yeah, the paint effects. Yeah, and paint effects is great. Polygons. I, like, I like it, except it kind of just like does this to your render time. It just <laughs> um, it yeah. yeah. So you can, when you convert it to polygons, you can actually reassign the textures um, to, to work with like Arnold and stuff. Otherwise, sometimes it does do weird stuff to your render times. Um, I was going to say, the other thing you could do is look at using MASH and like populating some some random stuff into the ground that way, like models that you made uh, into the ground that way. Mm -hmm. But And then uh, I'm weird just texture curiosity. There's like seams in most of your hills, and they seem to be at the same spot. Was that? I just like use the plane with a displacement map on it to create them. Mm. And so I don't know, and I really don't know how that's happening. I think it just might be with like how my noise is because I, mean, I use the noise map to generate it. Mm. I was going to say, it almost looks like a, like a UV thing. I, I thought it was intentional actually because it, it all happens at the same height and I was thinking you might have tried to do something like that. but. Well, it's weird. So. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, now, I don't know if you can see it on the projector, but I did try to add like a bit of motion blur in the run. Like, it, you can see it. Mostly see it around the grass area. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, I can see it with the grass. Um, I'd also say, actually, want, the grass feels like weirdly blurry. And I think part of that. I also like tried depth of field, so like. <laughs> gotcha. So that's why it might be a bit blurry. So. Well, no, I mean, so if you use depth of field, that'll also jack your render times up. Yeah. But um, if you use depth of field, I think what would be good, and just would be kind of good in general, is to go back and maybe add like a little bit more detailed hmm, texture to that sand area. Because mm -hmm. um, the fact that it's pretty much, it seems to be a uniform color as far as I can tell. Like the, the depth of field is a little bit lost on the ground, which kind of accentuates the blurriness of the grass in a, in a little bit of a weird way, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I do, I do, actually that would explain also why the background in all of the like sand hills and stuff are, or is, is blurred out. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as I can tell, it seems like the camera movements are, are fairly smooth, save that like one area. There's not anything that, I would flag as like, oh, holy crap, this is super nauseating looking. Um, other suggestion I might have is it might be good to play with the, the keyframe and like the interpolation of the first keyframe on the first frame. Because you can kind of see where it, it sort of slowly starts moving from, from being stationary on that first frame. Um, so if you can maybe even if you like shot it in from like the side of the camera or like just did something where you feel like you're capturing it more in motion at the beginning, I think that would also help sort of 
sell the illusion of this paper plane or paper airplane, which I still keep trying to call a flag. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, anyone else have any thoughts or comments? All right. Yeah. Okay. It looks like you might have some clipping geometry there. Yeah, a really thin line. Oh, yeah, I hate when the thin stuff does that. It's the bane of my existence. All right, cool. So would I be safe in assuming that this is like a mouse or a rat running around? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I do like the, the mouse traps. Um, oh, God. <laughs> um, all right, cool. So anything we should know about this before we look at stuff apart from the fact that it's a play blast? Yeah, I was going to say a lot of the camera movements look like a little bit fast and whippy. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, so anybody else have any thoughts or comments or like areas that um, in particular that like you find really drawing with the camera motions that maybe would be good to prioritize looking at? Kind of reminds me of Ratatouille. <laughs> I can see it. Yeah, I can see that with the soup as well. Um, anyone else have any thoughts? Yeah, I think the that Hedrick that like just happened right there also kind of stands out to me as being maybe one of the more like aggressive camera moves. Yeah. Um, and then I think I think that area like right in the beginning as he's right as he's coming around the second mousetrap and like going for the little pipe. Um, I don't think it's too whippy necessarily, but I almost feel like it could be smooth a little bit because like you have. It almost actually looks like if you're, if you're like a video game rat, it almost looks like he's sort of strafing between the two uh, yeah. poles, which I think is maybe a little bit weird for the, the motion of a rat head, but I think it, for the viewer, is like a much nicer sort of way to handle that. And you still, it's like still really obvious like what's actually happening. Yeah. Um, so it, maybe you could interpret, or maybe you could sort of, um, work in some of that into the other areas if you're looking for a way to make them feel a little bit like less whippy. Yeah. Also like the, the mouse traps look like they're well modeled. Um, but yeah, anyone else have any thoughts or comments? I'm actually curious so that, that like little rat poison thing at the end, did you make the graphics for that or did you find them online? No, okay, because <laughs> they're pleasingly terrifying. Um, other just like me being kind of a nut with wood grain, like the, the wood grain on the mouse traps is a little big yeah. <laughs> or a little small. Yeah. Um, gotcha. And I also must ask it because there's text. Is there anything interesting on the Campbell's label? Like, <laughs> no. Okay. Um, I'm always, half the time I'm like, anytime I have to make labels, I'm too lazy to actually find the ingredients, even if I have the thing right next to me, so I'll just put like weird stuff in. Just all the ingredients will be like despair. Um, sleeplessness. But anywho. But yeah, so I mean, I think, I think if you smooth out like a few of those like camera things that we mentioned, it, this would be pretty cool looking and then I'd also be really curious to see the lighting in this because it seems like you could do some interesting stuff like coming through the window and things like that. Okay. Cool. Any other thoughts, comments? All right. Like, it's at work. 
um, probably had a little bit more of a um, camera motion just like showing the actual set. Makes sense. Gotcha. All right. Does anybody have, have any? Blah. And actually, just out of curiosity, is this supposed to be? Oh yeah, wooden train. Wooden train set. Okay. Yeah. For some reason, I don't know what it was. Possibly just because all of the stores, for some reason, have started stocking Christmas stuff. But I'm like, oh, Christmas trees! Like this is a Christmas train. Um, but okay, so just wooden train set. Cool. Um, all right. Does anyone have any thoughts or comments on this? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I could probably just parent this. Just yep. Actually, if you didn't parent it, how did you make this movement? Um, secret. Stand. Did you, is this a circular track and you put the camera on a pivot? Um, no, so uh, I, uh, so it's actually the area around that's moving on a, uh, <laughs> that's quite funny. Yeah. Because um, I was thinking about messing around with it. I was, because I tried to like think of like other ways to do it, like real decent way. But then I was like, well, it's hard to just frame it a certain way. So like, there's a bunch more that's like models that I have that could be like used to fill. But I decided to like do this to mess around with the framing to see if I could like cut back better time. Gotcha. Um, so there's stuff in place to like get a bit more like crazy with it. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think it, I think it might be nice if you move the camera with the train. Um, I think it also might be good to maybe imagine how the camera is sitting or like how is mounted on the train, if that makes sense. Like, is it, is it like a GoPro, someone attached to a train, or is it someone, like, I don't know, looking out and checking to make sure there's like stuff not on the tracks? But I guess this is a wooden train set. That's not. It's valid, but uh, originally the camera mounting was like because there's actually a second uh, cart on there. It's uh. like a like a cargo like thing. Oh yeah. Um, but um, when messing around with the framing, it had some like clipping issues when it would go to like those like wood underpass things. Oh, like so, okay. So again, it was just like trying to figure out what would not make things like look bloated, just but like the framing would be decent to like show some of the things. Gotcha. I actually kind of think it would be nice if the, um, how did you do the motion of the train? Uh, so that like a motion map? That's just the follow up and down. It's, or no, it's, uh, oh yeah, wait, sorry, because you said the, okay. The track itself is the hazard. Yes, 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 good. Um, yeah, so I think, I do actually like your idea of like, I'm picturing like a coal cart or something behind this, if you're like yeah, hanging out in the coal cart. Um, and then you see the front of the train, and I think, one thing that might also sort of be nice about that camera angle is if you could see this train on the tracks, it would help place you in space. Because um, right now, like you kind of, you can always see the tracks are there, and you just sort of like assume that you're following it, but it's it's never quite there if that makes sense. Like you, I don't know. I feel like I feel like having that tangible, like this train is on the tracks, would be sure. nice. Um, and then if you were so inclined, you could actually look at um, turning the track into a motion path and either either just making a motion path fit your existing track or making a curve for the path and using it as a motion path and also yeah. to generate the track. Yeah. I mean, the track itself is like set up ahead and the, so like if I were to just like get like a motion path that's just like just to pick a circle motion path that okay. would like fit like just fine. Gotcha. Because everything's like already like sized Gotcha. It was just, uh, it, again, it was more of like working with the thing and what I could work at the time constraint. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, you could also, if this is like just a circular track, like you mentioned, you could actually just stick the pivot of the train in the direct center of that and then just yeah, actually, rotate the thing around. There's actually a, a central axis. Nice. Um, that's like a, just a podium that I was thinking just turning the visibility off for it if I were to do that. Gotcha. But, uh, yeah. Fair enough. Um, cool. Anyone else have any? Other thoughts or comments or like things that like ideas they have to improve anything in this? That was not coherent. Cool. 
Um, all right, so the only other thing I would say, and it's not really relating to the animation, mostly like the uh, positioning of things on the HDRI. Mm -hmm. um, if there's a way to make this look more integrated with the background or just hide the background entirely. Um, uh, I, did, I originally made this guy then like rotate this like, all right, we'll blur this, but then I only looked at it post and it was just like, yeah, the next thing is just gonna have walls. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and you could even maybe do something like if you could find like some sort of rocky cliff texture deformers or something like that to sort of sell the idea that it's like a train set. It was originally lowered to the ground, but then when I was having issues with the flooring, I mm. tried to just find it like a relative position that showed rotation more. Gotcha. But, yeah. Cool. Fair enough. All right. Last call for questions and comments. All right. Well. This looks like a Minecraft turtle, which I've just saw for the first time the other day. So any thoughts or comments on this one? Yeah. That's true. I actually didn't even think of that. That's actually pretty funny. Because um, I was going to say, I actually Actually, before I go on an insane rampage, anyone else have any thoughts or comments? All right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I feel like the movement of the, the cameras and this little object are pretty nice through most of this. Um, there's nothing I think is like overly whippy or weird. Um, I think the thing that actually stands out the most to me is the, that spinning thing at the beginning with the whole track. Where, like, when you mentioned the thing about the Mario, like, hey, this is where we're going to be going, that I like as a concept. I feel like maybe, maybe there's a way to execute that in a way that feels less like a turntable that's sped up a little bit too fast. Um, and then to me, it also feels a little bit weird that it's just sort of like spinning around on the background. Uh, I was, I was a little bit confused at what I was actually supposed to be like looking at with that, if that makes sense. Um, this is also now like thing floating in space and I'm just like, ooh, it's like different version of Rainbow Road almost, but in a like science-y desert. Um, but yeah, so anybody have, else have any thoughts, um, things they like in the animation, things they think could be improved, um, thoughts on that little beginning swivel? Because I'm actually curious to see what other people have to say about that. Anybody? All right, um, shall I randomly call somebody then? Because I feel like I feel like nobody's saying anything, and I might just start picking people randomly. All right, random selection of a person. Ha, huh. Chris, you've said like eight things. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Uh, gotcha. Wait, I thought I called him for attendance, or didn't I? Okay, well, he can come back and look at the yeah. thoughts on this. What's your name? Matt. I feel like... I actually don't think I did. Um, gotcha. Thank you. I see. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. No, I just, I just put you in. Thank you. Um, All right, cool. So yeah, so any other thoughts? I do kind of agree, like that, that one little curve 
did feel maybe like a little bit slow. I think there could, there could be maybe a little bit done to smooth some of the, the camera work, like particularly in the beginning. It's um, maybe a little bit obvious in spots where it was sort of like keyed in one direction and like started off and then, and then started going towards a different key in a different location, just in terms of like how it rotates. Um, kind of right like in this area particularly, but I do think a lot of the work towards the end is pretty nice. Um, but yeah, any other thoughts and comments? I feel like there were like two people that maybe had something. No? All right. Um, cool. All right. On to the next one. My God, it's Lego Pac Man. It took me a minute. All right, I really want sound effects with this. That's all, that's all I need in my life. <laughs> cool. All right, so thoughts and comments on this guy? It looks like what? Mm. Gotcha. I actually almost, so I actually almost feel like it's, Pac-Man is like weird and hard to do because it's the way the original game is made. Like he just snaps to a different rotation, which I feel like would be entirely disorienting if you did with a camera. But I feel like, I don't know, what do you, yeah, that's, that's a fair point. Um, what do you guys think about the corners? And like, I, mean, I think it definitely reads in terms of motion. Does it feel inherently like Pac-Man-y? Yeah, no, I'm, I think snapping in this case would be probably really awkward. I almost wonder, like, what if he started doing that sort of, like, almost strafing while you turn or something? But that would be, that would look really dumb. I think actually one thing that, I, yeah. Pac-Man. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of what like me and a few other people were saying too. But I also feel like if you just sort of, because I feel like strictly speaking, to be to be Pac-Man, you would have to like go straight up to the corner and then just like cut straight up cut to a different camera angle, which might be really hard to look at as a viewer <laughs> in Pac-Man view. Um, I think the one thing that would help sort of sell it for me maybe is having, instead of clipping through all the little, uh, all the little balls, have them disappear maybe like right as you got to them or like before, uh, especially for that big power pellet at the end um, where you just, you sort of like stop right like with your face in it and you're like, Oh, he should be eating that right now. Um, but yeah, it also might be nice to do. I like I like the Lego idea. I think that's actually pretty pretty cute way of. It's from um, a game. Uh, oh, is like it? Pac-Man level in one of the games that looks Lego, and I'm like, I like that. I'll use it. Gotcha. Cool. I am also a fan. Um, it might be nice to do. Like, I feel like you could do something really interesting maybe with the lighting, um, or it, not interesting per se, but like, it might be nice to get a little bit more definition on some of the Legos uh, and see maybe a few more shadows on the tracks. Um, I assume that the white background, is that just like a, a dome light? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, so I think using either an HDRI or like throwing something else in there for the background um, would be, a, nice to have something more than white for a background. Um, but unmapped dome lights tend to make really, really flat lighting. Um, 
So there's not, I don't know, they, they usually kind of wash out and they'll like get rid of a lot of details. Like you can see like the Legos kind of appear flat on the little nubs at the top. So that's like also a thing that I would look at if you go back and do anything with this. Um, but yeah. This is gonna, I'm just gonna be thinking about like how Pac-Man would turn in Pac-Man view for like a week oh, now. Yeah. I like when I was doing this, I was thinking in my head about it, but I don't know why I never bothered to look. I mean, I was kind of in this, but I never, never bothered to look at the game for reference to how they do the turn. Yeah. Because if they did it like it actually is happening, be like super disappointing. Right. It looks like you're teleported. Indeed. I feel, I was almost like, oh, it would be interesting if you like left a trail or something behind you. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense at all. And you wouldn't see it, so that's... But yeah, that's actually really interesting that someone's like gone through and done that. It seems like a very disorienting game. Um, but yeah. Scary. It's, <laughs> I can see that. Um, it would actually be funny to like throw a little ghost in here yeah. or there. But yeah, so I mean, if you're doing a resubmit, I think... I think mostly what I look at, because like, I don't think your camera angles are like particularly disorienting. I think I would focus on trying to like make it feel more Pac-Man-y, if that's possible. And, that, and apart from like some some lighting and texturing things, that would probably be like honestly what I focus on most. Um, really, really try to sell the feel of Pac-Man. But cool. Any last questions, comments? All right. Ew. Indeed. Such a it's it's such a good sketchy subway feel, and then I, the blinking lights are also a nice touch. Um, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> Horror movie. Ah, wait, what? Oh, <laughs> I thought there was suddenly sound on this that I didn't notice was a thing. <laughs> I mean, y'all are welcome to tack on. I had someone, I think in my other class, might have been this class, I don't know. Someone tried to Rick roll me with the first assignment. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, cool. So any thoughts or comments on the camera motion? Um, uh, real quick, how mm -hmm. do you make the tracks? And that's, I assume, why you were asking about the bed deformers. Yeah. So, so seeing your actual project now, what what was causing the issue with the bend deformer? Like, what were you trying to do with the pivot? Oh, I was trying to add more segments. Ah, okay. Okay. So I was gonna actually suggest you could, you could, cons I thought you were trying to like animate the thing. So you could conceivably lay something like that out with mash, maybe. Um, let me just like nip into Maya for five seconds and see if, if this horrible idea that I have has any merit at all. Um, that is a disgustingly shaped plane. But um, so you can do a thing in mash where you like lay out, we, um, you can lay out stuff along specific like faces or segments. So if I grab this as sort of like my template for the track shape, and I have no idea if this is actually going to work. Um, I did a bend deformer on this, rotated my bend deformer to be useful. Great. Um, so theoretically what I should be able to do, I'm just going to delete the history on that, is go into Holy crap, where's my mash tab? Go into my mash tab, um, make another, ooh, wait, that's actually, shoot, that's actually not what I wanted. Ah, what have I done? Oh. 
<sighs> Hang on. Windows. Not water. All right. So Mash hid the original mesh, and I was like, oh my god, where did it go? All right. So if I just wanted like little slats or something to be on this, um, for now I'm just going to use cubes, very long, stretchy cubes. Um, I'm going to go in and make a mash repro with these. Uh, and I have, I'll go over mash later. Um, I know I went over it with, with people who were in my previous class, but um, mash is delightful and very helpful and why I guess. Um, all right, so basically what I'm going to do is just go through and distribute these along the mesh. Um, once I figure out where the heck they put. All right, so. Good lord. There we go. Um, all right, so if I do number of points, I don't know what I set that to. Distribution type, um, set that to mesh. Then it's going to ask you for an input mesh, and then you should just be able to throw in your, uh, your sad little plane that you just made. And you can see that like the cubes are now on the plane, but it looks really weird. Um, set the method to face center, and that'll put a cube on every single face. Um, you can add more of them until it covers your whole track. And what I should be able to do is if I grab this original cube and actually forget, can I? Yeah, so if I just rotate that like 90 degrees, um, it'll pretty much lay out your track for you more or less. Um, and then it'll, you can do weird stuff where like if you grab this face and you like move it, it'll shift your track around and that's a little bit awkward. Um, but that is theoretically one way that you could lay the tracks uh, and have maybe a little bit not needing to worry as much about pivots because MASH is like positioning things for you automatically if that makes sense. Uh, was that vaguely helpful maybe for yeah. thoughts? Cool. <laughs> um, I just did, I used MASH for something similar where I like laid out studs on a suit of armor using MASH just like that and it was so much faster than hand laying them out. Um, but yeah, you can also use um, duplicate special. Uh, I do that for stuff kind of a lot. Um, so if you grab like, just grab my sad little track thing. And this, this particular version of this um, works less well if you need things in a squiggle, but good if you just wanted something like in a circle. So if you just do um, edit duplicate special, open your settings, and set the rotation, I'm just going to say like 15. Uh, and I don't know, add like 20 of them. Um, you could also lay it out like that um, using duplicate special. And they're still all just sort of individual objects, which you have to like move. And it's just kind of doing it based on all the pivots. But again, if you're just looking for a circle, that, that would probably get you what you need. Um, all right, tangent over. Um, cool. So any other, yeah, like thoughts, comments on the animation? Yeah, yeah. Because like if you're on a train and there's windows and all of a sudden you've got blinding lights flashing in. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's that a fair point. Like, it just looks looked at like that for a second. I love the light. I love the lights by the way. That's fair. I never actually like stopped to consider why those lights existed and I'm like, oh yeah, that's a fair point. Strobing lights in a train is like bad idea. Um I also like that, like, when that was brought up, you're like, I do have an actual real world reason for this. Like, that's awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, I also just like, I'm a fan in, in general of the, the texturing on the pipes and stuff. You have like nice sort of little subtle like grime and specular highlights on things. Um, I think that the lighting on the track looks really nice as well. Like with the, it's like just enough light and specular highlights to like see where you are, but not enough to be overwhelming, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I just think like less believable in this instance. Um, I also do like the, the sort of, oh crap, the train is coming at the end. I'm picturing someone like on a little mine cart 
as they're like going down this thing. They're like, oh God, the train. Um, but there was a cool little like extra story element in there. Um, and then. Gotcha. The thing where like the, the little bell starts tolling and everyone starts sprinting across the tracks like, oh my God, we need to catch a train. Um, which was actually my morning today. Um, but yeah, cool. I think this is pretty well done. I don't, th there's nothing in the camera that like I personally find to be super disorienting or whippy. Um, I do like that you've actually added that like extra little bit of camera motion of like bobbing up and down. Um, I think that's kind of a nice touch. Again, to me, it just screams like I'm pumping a little mine cart to like try to outrun the train, but yeah, cool. Last call for thoughts and comments. All right. I also like that you've actually hung all the lanterns off the strings. That's also a nice touch. Um, names. Any thoughts or comments on this one? Yep. Uh, I like this one a lot, except for the fact that once the train takes off, you lose the ground you can see where the train ends, which is kind of. Oh, like the ground plane? Yeah, the ground yeah, plane yeah, yeah. Start. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. I was going to say the same thing, but. Like, it just goes off into the forest. Like, the, uh, I like how it's just all really smooth, because it looks like there's only like one like that. Yeah. Level. Gotcha. Wait, so um, the the motion path, I take it, was for the plane or for the camera or both? Um, or like, well, I did um, separate. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. But they're, they're both on a motion path? Is yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think if you have, um, I'm not entirely sure what that one blip was, um, which is going to come up, like, now, like, that was a little weird, uh, especially for a motion path. I was going to say, um, sometimes motion paths, if you have like sharp corners in them, um, it's kind of hard to control the rotation of stuff because it like whips it pretty aggressively. Um, I would suggest going through, especially for that one blip, and just like making sure you don't have any extra little um, control vertices that are like making a little bump or anything like that. Um, and then if if it's just like a normal motion path that like seems like it should be working and it's still being weird, feel free to send me your file uh, and I can take a look at why that's being strange. Yeah. But possibly make just making the motion path like wider like the ground if there is kind of a like a bigger course to work through. Like that's how they think it might be like how grass around. Yeah. And then the other thing I was gonna suggest is kind of similar to that. Um, we think about how planes usually turn. So you, like, you have it a little bit with the, the rolling, um, but usually if planes are turning, they'll sort of like physically tilt in the air. Uh, so like when it's going around the, the little control tower thing, it seems like it should sort of like go on its side to do that, because like, that's a pretty sharp turn where it would like need to, need to curve more to actually achieve that, if that makes sense. Um, aesthetically, it would also probably just look cool. But yeah. And then the other thing, and this is a tiny thing, um, right, there's like a little part at the beginning where like you can see this plane is stationary and then right here, like you can see its shadow and you can just sort of see it not moving. Um, so I might maybe just like throw in like some keyframe somewhere. So it's just sort of like doing something during that time. Yeah. Um, alternately you could, sort of cheat and hide it. <laughs> like literally just turn it off until the other plane is covering it and then unhide it and it's like, oh look, another plane. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, I think that like I actually really like the jitteriness at the beginning. It kind of if to me it feels like yeah, like it feels like maybe flying in stormy weather or like oh, I like don't know how to fly this plane. Holy crap! And then you're just gonna like ah, and then you like calm down and you're like all right, I'm gonna get this thing level. Um, so I think it's kind of like a neat little feel to that. I was thinking it'd be funny. I'm actually so is this. Is this supposed to be like model planes or like a realistic scale flying thing? Okay, gotcha. Because I was like, it definitely, they look like little model planes. For some reason I was like, it'd be really funny to have little clouds floating everywhere. It's like little like cartoon clouds, but it's also probably a horrible idea. Um, but yeah, anyone else have any thoughts or comments on this? Cool. Yeah, I mean, I think the camera motions in this are like pretty successful. Um, most of the stuff I would look at is, again, sort of um, fixing that one weird blip and then just making sure that the motion of the planes is realistic and that they're like rotating in the right way. Cool. Where is my cursor? Ah. And I think I go now. Okay. All right, any thoughts or comments on this? Was that a hand? Yeah. And also just knowing the scene, like there's a storm happening, so like mm. the water would not be that like, because this is obviously based on it, like the, like the book it. Oh okay. But, or the movie it. Never seen. It. Never seen either. So um, like in that whole thing, it's just like storming and like water wouldn't be that big of a storm. But I. Gotcha. Yeah. I do like that there's like little like bumps of. Um. You can see there's like little bumps in the water where it's like maybe hitting like a rock or something and like splashing up. Um, but yeah, I do agree. I think it would be nice. Um, maybe play again with the reflectivity of the water and then you could even do something weird if you um, add like a texture deformer into this and then animate a little noise texture. You can make the water sort of ripple a little bit. Um, I actually have a video of it somewhere. I think I've actually linked it in one of the docs on Drive. It's like a tutorials doc. Um, I made it like a while ago, but it's not the prettiest water effect ever, but it will give you at least a little bit of ripple that might sort of help to sell the idea of like it's storming if that's what you were going for. Um, not knowing the scene, I just sort of assume that this is like right after it stopped raining, but there's still a bunch of water sort of like dripping off the streets and stuff like that. Um, and the little boat's just kind of falling down there. Um, also, at the end, I really want to see it like gets so close to falling out of view. I really just want to see it like disappear from screen. <laughs> um, but yeah, anybody else? Any thoughts or comments? All right, I'm gonna call a random name, mm -hmm. which is myself. Diego is not here, is he? Oh, oh, cool. <laughs> okay, great. I'll mark you for attendance. Yeah, basically, um, the water will reflect the sky. Oh, wrong. inclined to say that that's actually modeled in because you can kind of see how it's like deforming the the reflections but yeah um, I also do like the the sort of what am I trying to say the the fence that was modeled in to sort of hide and like integrate stuff with the HDRI I think that was done pretty nicely um, and then 
just for the sake of like me being like apparently kind of a modeling nut, um, totally could use cards for grass if you ever wanted to get like a little bit more realistic grass. Uh, just make like a sketchy little card texture or like grass texture with transparency and just like throw those on and it would give it a little bit um, less of a chunky stylized feel if that's uh, something that you guys were looking for. Um, I do also like, like you can see how the little boat is like rocking back and forth, which is nice. And then as soon as it hits these little like rapid areas, it sort of like gets swept up in them and then like jiggles back down, which I think is also sort of nice secondary motion. And right when it's about to fall, it does like a nice little like shake as it sort of hits that, like snags on the storm drain and then flops around before sort of falling down into it. Um, but yeah, cool. Anything else? All right. And this is the last one that I have downloaded. If I missed any ones, we can go over those. Cool. So anyone have any thoughts or comments? Always a fan of like fake Rube Goldberg devices. And oh, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I definitely agree about the, the baseball falling. Um, that does feel a little bit weird. Um, anyone else have any thoughts or comments? All right. Um, I'm just going to like do a few observations and then perhaps call on somebody at random. Um, so I, I also agree about the camera motion being a little bit jittery. Um, I think one thing that would help in this case, like it feels, I don't know how it was animated, um, but it feels very much like you can sort of see the keyframes of like, it's here and then it's, it's going down and it's going down again. Um, so I think, and that's sometimes what happens when, if you're just like animating the camera itself and like keying every motion that it makes, um, which is one reason that I suggested e either setting up some kind of little like either motion path or like one of those like fake camera rigs uh, that I mentioned last week where you have like the different groups for like pan and tilts and stuff. Um, Cause that can help sort of avoid stuff like that where it's like a pretty kind of obvious down here um, where it's like a little bit extra jitter possibly because there's just like extra keyframes that on attributes where they like didn't necessarily need to be at that point and they're like being forced into place if that makes sense. Um, Other than that, I think the, the little red ball, when it bounces back, could probably roll a little bit farther. Uh, and then I was, I was really clear on what was happening when all the stuff was sort of like chain reaction, having things fall over, and then it sort of like goes onto this picture at the end. And I don't know if it's just me, I was like unclear what the significance of that picture was in the story, or like the, the quote unquote like story of this animation, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I always kind of thought it would be cool like if the, if the balls are all sort of like rolling down and then that last little one like hits some kind of switch or something like that and then you see the lights turn on above the picture. Um, like that would have been maybe a way to tie that in, but I don't know, to me the, the ending just feels like a little bit random. Um, but yeah, that's mostly my thoughts on this. Anyone else have any other thoughts or comments? Yep. Mm. Um, also fair. The only thing that counts thing that feels maybe a bit off mm. is that when this part when it goes like that extra step to the ground, it feel, like it's sort of adds to it, like it has to like drop. It feels a bit awkward, but that's the only one that sort of gets me. Yeah. Kind of like the idea of it popping out of the window, but it kind of gives it just like a weird uh, in the fun sense of like spacing but that just like a 
Yeah, I personally have no, no preference for or against it going out of the window. I do think that the motion it's doing at that time is a little bit weird, maybe. Like, where it, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like there's a reason for it. It just sort of, it, like, shoots back, and then it, like, goes forward all of a sudden. Um, so I think if maybe, if the going out of the window was intentional and something you wanted to play out, maybe, like, refine the camera angle, or, like, the, the camera movement in that area, so it feels a little bit more natural, and maybe, like, that was a more conscious decision, if that makes sense. Um, cool. Anyone else have any thoughts, comments? All right. Um, and then is there, so that was the last one I had downloaded. Um, does anyone else want to look at stuff? All right. Yeah. Mike? Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> um, very slowly learning people's names, which is insane because I've taught half of you, like, for three quarters now. <laughs> um, all the Campbell's soup things. Out of curiosity, are these the Campbell's soups that... What the heck? <laughs> so trippy. Um, are these the Campbell's soups from the... Uh, what am I saying? The like CGI 2, I think, final with the... No. Okay. Um, I thought it might have been one of the like shared assets or something like that. Anyway. All right, cool. This is so weird. Um, all right, so anyone have any thoughts or comments on this? Do you remember that, that old commercial where it's like the mom like says you can't have Campbell's soup and then it just rolls out the door? Like, yeah, that was kind of the original. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's exactly what it reminded me of. I don't remember. I think that does. But that. Yeah, I, that I do remember, yeah. I don't, that's, I don't remember what soup it was, but... That's quite funny, actually. Is the clearance sign just a plane? Huh. Is the clearance sign, is it like, is it just a plane or is it like a physical... Oh, it's a key. Say that again? It's a key. Okay. It, um, it is kind of weird, though. Know, like, the one quarter. That is not the one. Oh, that, that is very pretty successful. Like the, it, the mic, like, tucked back. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I like that you sort of like have it falling down. Um, I feel like that's a good effect. Maybe yeah, just play with the positioning of the text a little bit because um, it does feel a little stretchy. But also, I like the lighting in the store. Like, it just it screams like gross, badly lit supermarket. Yeah. Which is, I assume, what you were going for, and I feel like it has been accomplished. <laughs> also nice with all the price stickers, which all look like the same price sticker. <laughs> they are. <laughs> well, no, there's a few, and they just sort of all stick. I see. But, yeah, it's repeated. Gotcha. Yeah, it is a clearance, so. Yeah. <laughs> just to throw up a sign, everything's a dollar. Um, which makes no sense for soup and cereal, but. I mean, there's things that are like tonics, so. I would second that. Um, what is, so I'm actually really curious, what's, what was the thought behind all the cereal like flying off the shelf and going out the door? Well, the, the original idea was just to be like following the home food can. Okay. Then, I sort of felt like some of my textures on like the shelves and like the lighting, it felt like a really like abandoned supermarket. Right. And I wanted to make it like I know that the, the cereal boxes, the animation is like super janky and like <laughs> weird. Um, so they kind of just like impulsively had that <laughs> idea. Right. Um, yeah, I think if you were going, because I think everything looks pretty good in this. Like the, the texturing and the lighting is nice. Um, I'm a fan of the sort of extra stuff you've like thrown on the bottom shelves. Um, I think, yeah, I think what stands out the most to me is like just the movement of that stuff where if you're, if you're, if you're shooting for Haunted, I might go through and like maybe even use fewer boxes and like you could have, like you had that one drop off the shelf and that looked pretty nice. You could maybe like drop a few more off the shelf like that or even like duplicate that animation onto some other boxes. Um, 
but have them go at different times or just like use fewer boxes and then maybe maybe like plan out the haunted thing because it feels like they just, it's like a door of cereal that floats in the air and then all of a sudden it's just like someone like hit it with the like Fusro da thing and like shot it out the window. I don't know how you actually pronounce that, but yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think I think overall, like this looks pretty nice. And then it was the, the, at the end. Is that my imagination, or like does the light actually get greener? Oh, yeah. Was that okay? Like, when, when things start floating around, that's when the green light like actually begins to increase. Right. Because oh. I was looking at that, I'm like, I don't remember that being so green in the beginning. I feel like what if you could almost sell like play that more where like at the beginning what if it's just like a gross dingy supermarket with maybe like a flickering light and then as things get weirder like the green becomes more intense or like there's some other like weird lighting cue that would sort of indicate haunted but like a, like a more extreme version Gotcha. And then other thing to maybe look at is like the bouncing of that soup can. Yeah. Um, I think it's like the first bounce is kind of off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Not that I'd recommend throwing soup cans because it seems like they would break eventually, but you could you could totally toss a soup can on the floor and like see what happens. Um, but yeah, cool. I do like the camera room, it's sort of like a nice, it feels like sort of creepy pan through a creepy grocery store. Um, all right, any other thoughts, comments? All right. All right, who else do I need to look at? Uh, I can't see, all right. Uh, I saw your hand first the first time and I should know your name. Andrew. Andrew, thank you. Um, Terrible UI. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, whoops. Wait, uh. Oh, okay. Wait, never mind. Okay. Goldfish. All right. Vague curiosity how did you make the little goldfish? Okay. And then I have a sign performer going through them so that they move. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, I was actually curious, so like I can't I can't tell from the way they're moving, but I couldn't tell if they were like plain goldfish with like a texture or if they're actually were like physically modeled goldfish. But either way, I think they're cute. Um, the sign deformer is a clever way to make them move. I honestly usually don't use sign deformers, but like that was a nice use of one. Um, all right, anywho, thoughts and comments on the actual animation. Yes. The water texture, the they didn't really move in the way that they show. Yeah. It's very realistic. I also like the foggy effect that you get when at the bottom. The only actual complaint would be the background between the split things and when it gets to the bottom. It's just that light and then the blue. But other than that, it's pretty good. Could you blur that horizon line? Um, so I mean that I would probably say just do with feathering, um, but also, so is your scene set up where there's like a plane, like the sort of blue plane with like a, I can see it on my monitor, but there's like a sort of sandy texture on it. Yeah. There's like one plane and then the plane at the top is the water yeah. and then between it is just sort of nothing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think what I would have done in this case is probably... That water on the top does look really nice. Um, but yeah, I think I would have maybe thrown in some kind of like 
plain in the background. Um, or you could do one of those really stupid, um, like soft, soft edge box things, um, which is uh, where you uh, really hate auto creation. It's gross. Um, so if you do something like this, and then you just sort of grab this edge and you bevel it, but nicer. Um, you could apply a gradient texture to this so that it would be like a little bit brighter at the top and then sort of fade down into sandiness. Because um, it does look like from the, the water, like you have this nice environmental fog here, so presumably the visibility in the water isn't that fantastic anyway. Um, I think if you did something like that, you could sort of like be a cheap and easy way to sort of like fudge that in the background. Because um, if you ever, I don't know, yeah, at some point you just sort of reach it when you're looking in the water and there's not great visibility. It just turn, turns blue. Um, I don't know. I, I used to do scuba diving, so I can attest that that is a thing. Um, <laughs> I've, done, I've done a lot of weird stuff. Um, but yeah, so I think that would also be like my biggest sort of thing with this is like it, that kind of broke the illusion of the, the anchor falling. It kind of was confusing to me and like almost I interpret it as like it sank below the water, and then I'm like, holy crap, why is it suddenly like falling down from the sky? Um, but yeah. The other thing you might look at is changing, like keying the lighting as it's falling down so that when it's above the water, it's brighter, and then like as it slowly starts going down, the lighting gets dimmer and dimmer. Um, and I think that would also sort of help the idea that it's falling into the murky depths of nothingness. And then if you really want to get cool, like about 30 feet down, it changes color and temperature. <laughs> like it, when you're diving, like about hmm. 30 feet down, it will change to like a, depending on the, the environment, of course, it will change into like a greener, like murkier hmm. environment. Like, I don't know. It's yeah. something cool you can add if you want to research. Also true. Um, also, fun fact, 33 feet of water on top of you is equal to one atmosphere, the weight of all of the air from here to like the top of the planet. <laughs> um, but anywho, weird tidbits. Um, but yeah, I mean, that could also be a cool effect. I also like the weird person in me is like, oh, wouldn't it be neat to see some kind of like little sand puff when that hits the ground, but that's unnecessary. I think the other thing that might also help sort of position you in space is maybe having, like you have these little goldfish, which I very much enjoy. They're adorable. Um, maybe just add some like, like a sketchy little card kelp forest or something like that. Because um, that way as you're falling through the water, you would sort of see something shifting behind you, which would help give you a better idea of like how far and how fast you're falling, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, any other thoughts, comments? All right. In that case, uh, Zia, do you want to look at yours? Was that yeah. sweet? Uh, <laughs> oh, I do love when these download so fast. <laughs> Poly paint trees? Sorry? Poly paint trees in the background? <laughs> it's a little like Maya auto-generated. Holy crap! <laughs> well, that was deeply uncomfortable. Um, just a side note. Anyone seen the Thomas the Trank mod for Skyrim? <laughs> um, it just kind of reminded me of that. Um, but yeah, polypaint is like the thing where you can generate plants and trees and stuff like that. Oh, oh yeah, I did that. <laughs> gotcha. Just for the stage, though. Okay. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing you could consider maybe for that is like doing some, and I feel like it, it seems maybe a little bit weird for this type of train, but you could do like under the seat lighting where there's like little lights, like right. Yeah under there, and that way I think you'd get the, the lighting that you want without having the, the light in the floor. Um, you can also throw lights at the bottom, like under the window, sort of on the floor, 
that makes sense. But yeah. Um, cool. Any thoughts, comments on this? All right. I'm going to. God, that's so creepy. Why? Um, all right, I'm going to call on a random person just for grins. Haha, -ha, the random person of the day is Jake. Hello. Did you um, actually move the train or move the environment up by the way? Because I also did the train thing. Like, uh, okay, yeah, like this one. I think that was definitely the better way to go about it. I tried moving the train and it caused quite a few issues. But I knew if I moved the train, I would actually have to move like the person camera mm -hmm. over the train. I already knew if I would be really confused. Definitely. Wait, but you can just, so you can. Me being the very literal person I am, I probably would have moved the actual train. Um, functionally, it doesn't really matter. But um, if you just made like the giant outer carriage of the train, you could just go in and group all of the other stuff, like the chairs and the coat and everything under it. Yeah. So Intel's local space is the train. So if you move that train, it's going to take your camera and stuff with it. Okay. Um, so it doesn't what? No, well, so let me let me set up a janky little train <laughs> in Maya. Um, all right, let's get some mighty sketchy live demos. All right, here is our beautiful train. It is glorious and horrendous looking. I will give it a window because I feel like that would be helpful. That's a sad window. All right, it's close enough. Um, yeah, so you should be able to. Uh, where am I going? Make a camera. Um, if you just grab that camera and then put it, uh, parent it under that train, um, you can just move the train as you want. So I'll set a keyframe here and then randomly over here. Uh, and then you should also, so like that's going to take the camera with it. Um, you should also be able to then animate the camera. Oh, God. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is the scale of my camera being suddenly changed? Oh, I know why, maybe. I think my camera scale is being messed up because I uh, didn't zero out this. So like my, my train scale is super weird. So I'm just going to really quick oh God, freeze the scale, see what happened. My it's like completely insane sometimes. I don't understand like why it does things the way it does. All right, yeah, that's really dumb. Um, all right, so I'm just going to zero that out. And this time, I'll parent it under it again. And now the scale of my camera isn't insane. Great. Um, but yeah, so you should be able to animate that uh, however you want, assuming you don't mess with the scale of the train, apparently, um, within your scene. And it's just going to follow along like in the car of the, the train. Um, so you can kind of. Hmm. But yeah, so you, I mean, you can kind of see that the camera is like swiveling and doing its own thing and just staying within the realm of whatever the train is doing. So conceivably, you can either you can even animate your camera within the train and then be like, all right, at the end, I'm just going to key the motion of the train itself. Um, but yeah, so sh theoretically, unless you play with scale, it shouldn't cause that many issues. But again, if you found another way to make it work, there's like eight ways to do stuff in Maya. Yeah? Like the only Pretty much. Yeah. Um, the other alternative that you could do is uh, actually constrain. Like, if you if you didn't like that setup in the outliner, because I know, like, I don't know, I'm weird about my outliner. Um, you could, if you were so inclined, uh, separate your camera and just throw it in a group, and grab the car and then that group for your camera and do a uh, do like a parent constraint for that, um, which functions more or less the same way. You just get to have the camera separate in the outliner if that is a thing that you desire. Um, but yeah. Any other questions on that while we're here with my sad train model? Uh, would it then also follow a motion path if you were to have like, some sort of like, weird motion? Like the camera? Yeah, the camera. Um, you could theoretically put a motion path in this if you wanted to. Okay. I think as long as that path was parented, it's, I think it would work pretty much the same way. Um, and then if it 
if it didn't work the same way and your camera was like shooting off of your motion path, it's probably getting a double transformation from trying to move the camera and also the motion path that's controlling the position of the camera. So if that was the case, I would just shift the camera outside, like unparent it from the cube uh, so that the cube is only dragging the path. But that is theoretically my thoughts on that. Any other questions? All right, cool, cool. Um, was that, okay, so any other thoughts and comments on this besides, dear God, the, the Thomas the Train face? It's quite effective now that I look at it. You don't <laughs> notice it at first, but when you rewatch it, you kind of you see it in like the corner of your eye. Yeah. It's nice to have something that kind of like rewards like a pay, like rewatch, you know? Right, yeah. It's, it is good film. It is true. Um, yeah, I think the camera motions for the most part are like pretty nice. Um, I, get, I found it really disconcerting. For some reason, I was like, oh my god, it's like a ghost train or something where it's like tilting to the side. Like, for some reason, in that instance, I interpreted the camera turning as the train physically tilting. And I was like, well, the path of the quarter thing makes no sense at all. But then I was like, that doesn't, that's a dumb way to look at this. Probably add like a small like up and down jitter, kind of like and to kind of mimic the motions like you get it, they're getting on their knees to go under the uh, feet. I, don't know. I would agree with that. I think that would also like for for maniacs like me who are like the whole train is tipping over. Um, <laughs> that would also probably help dispel that if you did have that sort of like shift forward, drop down, and then like that really stereotypical sort of like look to the side. Um, it's sort of like a different different way to handle that, but yeah, I mean, I do think I think what you have now is like definitely nice and smooth looking. Um, cool. Any other thoughts, comments? All right. Uh, do we miss anybody else? All right. In that case, um, really quick, just going to go over the assignments that are due this week, and then um, do is it week four? Is that okay? I feel like I literally just had this conversation with like three people. Um, all right, so you have two assignments that are due this week. Um, one of them is sort of the usual animation assignment. Uh, let me actually really quick 